Um, that's a powerful set of statements. I mean, one of the challenges, I think, in other parts of the world is that the energy industries are being pigeonholed as the problem rather than as the solution. Mm -hmm. And the community that you um, very generously um, introduced us to, th they, will be, they will be the seniors in 40 years' time. They will be uh, here in 2060 and inheriting uh, the, the practical outcomes of the vision that you're in talking about. But your vision, Your Highness, for energy transition, you talk and have talked previously around energy security, energy equity, mm -hmm. and energy sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, and your comments there about not choosing winners, being open to, to choices. Just in the area of energy sustainability, how do you see that developing over the next two to three years? And which of the emerging technologies do you have most confidence in uh, as we move through the period to 2060? Okay. Well, well, I always tell my uh, colleagues, we're not in the gambling business. <laughs> we should be prudent and we should be uh, leaning towards every possible solution. So the way we operate is that we are engaged with everybody. We're engaged with the Europeans, we're engaged with the Koreans, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Americans, in every aspect. And I'll give you an example. Uh, when it comes to carbon sequesterization, there is a forum which was organized 16 years uh, ago by the US. If you ask our friends in the U.S., you will, they will tell you we imposed ourselves, and I'm glad that we did. We imposed ourselves in that forum because it used to be, uh, it was meant to be for attending to call. So we literally, physically imposed ourselves by saying, can you expand it to take care of also hydrocarbons, not only just coal. And it is up and running and alive. And look at the amount of data and experience exchanges that is happening today. The difference is, with, is that also we bring our experience to the table. We don't want to be in the receiving end, end, as I said. We want to be part of the solution. So Aramco is doing a lot in terms of carbon sequesterization. We have a commitment for using CCUS to attend to about 27 million tons by 2030. It is there, it's in the ground. We're, use, we're, we're attempting to use CO2 as a way to enhance oil recovery. SABIC is doing also a bit of uh, carbon sequesterization. And we're also attending to something that we put together two years ago, which is the circular carbon economy. And we have a mean, we, I think we will be <coughs> the pioneer of the circular carbon economy when it comes to show the, showing the world how we can meet mm -hmm. these four R's, including the most challenging bit, which is how can we recycle CO2, how can we reuse CO2, and how can we uh, remove CO2. The first one, uh, reduce, is a going concern. Mm -hmm. We have efficiency, we have a 10 years of good record of uh, efficient, a serious efficiency program. It's there in the ground. Um, reduce, we have just made an announcement of removing million barrels of liquids, converting it into uh, using gas and renewable as a substitute for it. In fact, we have the most, probably gonna be the most successful uh, project in planet Earth because you're saving a million barrels which you used to burn it for cheap amount of local prices while well set you could have exported it uh, I have yet to see anything that is more financeable than that project so we're getting it's not going to be a burden something it's actually going to be a, ma a money making machine for, for us so in the reduce also we're we see ourselves involved seriously in hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And we want to size up that market. 
we know for sure that we will be the most com competitive uh, producer of both blue and green hydrogen because of facts in the ground. We are the least cost producer when it comes to oil and gas. We are the least cost producer when it comes to electricity from renewable. And we have uh, 50 years of history with desalination. And we have statements and announcements that were made about how much, how cheap we are when it comes to uh, producing uh, uh, a kilowatt per hour of electricity. If we can not commingle all of these things and assure ourselves that we can be there competing with everybody, but we want to go beyond that. That's why we are testing in Neom uh, with a green, a serious green project. That's why we are testing, uh, we'll be testing very soon. We have tested and we are piloted, we have piloted Blue with Aramco with the Japanese and we will be moving a lot uh, once Jafura comes along and more CO2 and more gas will be produced out of that. The Neom project is one of, uh, and we're hoping that again, but again, most of our uh, concern is how can we put together a global ecosystem that enable collaboration and cooperation in developing these technologies and enable people to use it and make use of it because we believe honestly, and there is nothing better than of a testament than what is happening today in this winter of those countries that elected to go for the narrow band instead of the all of the above. Don't want to name, name names because it would be a bit imp diplomatically imprudent, but there are countries within your neighborhood. <laughs> Let's uh, not go there. <laughs> that, that have chosen to go all the way renewable. Yep. And look at what they're doing now. They're burning twice as much coal. They're considering now calling nuclear green because it was green. I don't know why it became purple or whatever that color might be, but they're back again. Uh, look at what is the disturbances that are happening to markets, gas market electricity market all over the world and ask yourself is this a transition or is this a disruption of economic well-being and that's why when you gratefully alluded of what i've been saying and i will continue saying saying it predominantly energy security has to be the main pillar of anything without which you cannot preserve and maintain the other pillars that I keep talking about and will continue talking about, which is economic prosperity, economic growth. And if you don't have these two, you will never be able to attend to climate change because climate change requires lots of financial, lots of investment, lots of support, lots of uh, uh, programs that would require lots of money. If you don't have that energy security, you will not be going through that smoother transitionary situation. You, you, you make, there is so much in what you're covering, Johannes, 